Now, the QCAA requires you to develop what are called TLAPs, Teaching, Learning and Assessment Plans. Now, these are designed for you to frame how you are going to implement the syllabus, which defines the content, but the context and the assessment tasks you're going to utilize are described in your TLAP. Now, it also provides you opportunities to incorporate the 21st century skills that we discussed last week. Now, essentially, you describe the units that you've broken your content from the syllabus into, um, the assessment that you're going to be implementing. So in terms of the type of assessment, the weightings, the objectives that are being um, measured, the conditions upon which the assessment is conducted. Is it open book? Is it a three week assignment? Is it 2000 words? Those sort of conditions. Um, and the due dates and range of time available for students to spend on assessment tasks. Now this provides the QCAA with an overview of what you're intending so that it can be endorsed. So this is a process whereby you let the QCAA know what you're going to do. You submit your TLAPs the year before and they will then be looked at by expert teachers who will make judgments on whether or not your TLAP is suitable. Now, in the main, they are, but there'll often be little mistakes or areas where you haven't emphasized or addressed certain elements, and these will hopefully be picked up by the TLAP process. Now, they do need to be submitted every year um, because sometimes things get missed and we don't want to see them uh, perpetuate and things of that, that nature. There has been talk about TLAPs having a longer um, time frame particularly once people become more uh, used to doing them and they become relatively routine with few changes. But at the moment, of course, they're still going through a process of um, everyone becoming familiar with doing them. They are done on a yearly basis. So some of the things you have to take note of in your TLAPs, uh, you have 55 hours per um, unit, essentially a 10 week semester. Um, you never get the full 55 hours. There's always interruptions and so forth, but that's what you use for your planning purposes. You'll describe the subject matter and the alignment to the unit objectives in the syllabus. So you have to show that you're actually covering what's in the syllabus. Um, you'll provide some sample learning experiences. So what sort of activities you're going to do with your students. And then of course, you'll um, look at how you're going to assess it and also the resources you're going to use, particularly the resources you provide students in relation to completing assessment tasks. So, so a few other things that you need to consider that I've listed, um, things such as how you're going to integrate um, what is being taught with um, the learning activities what the assessment's going to be and whether or not the assessment aligns with what's in the syllabus, uh, what the resources you're going to have available and what you're going to provide students with when they're doing their assessment tasks and so forth. So have a look at those um, I've listed there. And while it's very difficult to get examples of TLAPs because they are submitted via an electronic form, essentially a database, in small fields, so there's no overall printout and so forth of your TLAPs. Um, and you've got to be very specific in terms of word count and formatting and so forth. Um, I have provi provided you with one example though from um, St. Joseph's, uh, where the um, teacher has described the TLAP that they were going to use uh, when, the, when the syllabus was fairly new. So have a look at those resources and we'll discuss them in the tutorial.